Any cock will do. That'll do. Yeah. <laughs> Alex is convinced that I'm a rooster due to my haircut. Well, um, I mean, I mean, if the cock fits, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, well, that's the benefit of mine. It always fits. It's never a problem. Hey, yeah. Oh, man, I forgot my damn water. Oh, well, I'm going to do this one dehydrated. Um, <laughs> it's good for you to be. I think you could be overhydrated. You don't want to be too hydrated. That's bad for you. Well, I'm gonna. I'll. I'll, uh, I'll lick a lot of lick my lips a lot. I lick my lips a lot. Mm-hmm. So hey, oh. everybody. Um, it's been a minute. We've uh, had a couple of weeks off. I feel amazing. Uh, been a while. <laughs> maybe we should have put stained on the on the list for this week. Alex is a big fan of that lyric right now. I, I want to oblige him. You so know, maybe one of you will request a, a stained album if that just so happened to do something for you at some point in your life. Everybody don't listen to Tony. Everyone listen to me because <laughs> Alex fucking deserves it. <laughs> <laughs> this is my punishment. <laughs> Thank you, sir. May I have another? <laughs> That's my punishment. Every, I want someone on this show to every, every just constantly make sure there's a stained album in our fucking queue here in our in our on our wheel. I'll quit. <laughs> oh, oh shit! <laughs> That'd be a funny reason to quit, though, right? That's not cool, man. <laughs> It'd be funny though. Oh, uh, Alex quit because uh, everyone kept on requesting stain because Tony <laughs> thought it was funny. <laughs> hey, I'd have to listen to this shit too, man. And I can only handle like one album, only when I'm real drunk and sad. So I don't want to do it either. One is too many. But if I have to do it to prove to make you stop, then yeah. Won't stop, never stop, can't stop. So how you doing, Butterface? I've been good. Um, this is the future. It is. That's right. I I forgot what the hell we're doing here. Um, you have made it to the show. Obviously, very organized, well put together. Uh, show called "This Is the Future." Unfortunately, mm, bet you're fucking <laughs> ass. Oh, I'm right. doing. You you looking sleepy? You, you get enough? You uh, you tired? I mean, I honestly, I, I take a midday nap. Mm, mm-hmm. That's really what it is. Uh, I haven't, I haven't smoked or anything today, but um, I did take a midday nap. I'm tired. I, I did, I did the grocery thing, the gym thing, and the clean the house thing, like in depth. That's what happens when you stay sober for more than twelve hours. Like you just go back to being a normal fucking weird human that cares about an apartment you don't even own. Yeah. Who gives a shit? You know. Don't know why I should clean the carpets. They're not really mine. Right. Well, think about it this way, Tony. We will never own an apartment, you or I. So I might own a compartment one day if I save enough money, but never an apartment. That's I would have to agree with you, Alex. I will not own an apartment. A, com- a, a, com- a compartment. <laughs> I got a lot of that. Um speaking of that, how was your trip? How was your uh, little vacation there? It was good, man. Hang on one sec. Oh, it was uh, it was awesome. I don't know if it's it's that time of year. I don't know if it's hot or cold. You know? Yeah, I know. Menopause. Yep. Um, the trip was rad, man. Um, honestly, I um, I my my old man is one of those people that kind of like um, always I forget what you call it, but where it's um basically where you plan on everything going to shit, and that <laughs> way if it doesn't then you're happy. And I know that's not everyone's cup of tea, but I don't even fucking like tea, so I don't care. But um, I that's how I did it, because I saw a lot of, I had a lot of concerns about the air travel. Mm-hmm. And because of that, I made it beautifully. But if I thought that I was going to be successful, then it would have all gone to shit. So anyway, the flights were cool. Oregon was sweet. Um, the time that I didn't spend with, you know, the des- on the Desert Days experience and road trip, I spent with... Um, Jesse and Joey, which is fucking awesome. I really like catch, uh, catching up with them. Joey's wearing a pumpkin outfit. And he had a pumpkin on his ass. That blew my mind. I'm going to hold that against him for the rest of his life. <laughs> um, pajamas. How are they? How oh, are they're they? good, man. They're, they're good. Um, you know, figuring it out. That's all. But it was rad to see everybody. They're in good spirits. That works. <laughs> it's not easy starting out young with kids and with a kid and all that, but. That's what that's what parents are for, right? To say, keep going, assholes. 
That's it. <laughs> yeah. Don't quit. Keep on doing it. But um, I will say this: the actual. So then we um, I flew to Oregon the next day. Uh, some you know, Phil and some other friends. We hopped. We piled up into into a dude's truck, and we all headed down. Checked out some um, hot springs. I'm trying to remember the name, but I can't. I guess I won't care right now. Um, they were rad. We've been there before. We stayed an extra day. They had yeah. an old cemetery that was pretty fucking spooky, so I went and checked that out. Oh, cool. I think I don't even remember the fuck it. I don't even remember the town. You know what? I'm not going to tell you where this stuff was because I don't fucking remember. So um... <laughs> in, in Oregon, though, somewhere, yeah. No, 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 no. Um, so in California, near um Mono Lake, and then oh, you end up on three. I don't. I don't. I'm just shit with names, and that's why well, people don't date me because I'm like, yeah, I'm with that chick, whatever. Well, her name is. I think as long as you just do the state, I think we'll be good. Yeah, I mean, it was in everything that everything was in California. Yeah, um, this was state. Northern California on the eastern side of um, shit. Whatever mountains those are, the Sierra, the Sierras, um, I believe. Yeah, mountains so that was cool. In California, how about that? Yeah, <laughs> somewhere in majestical Northern California, bitchin' views, awesome, hot. You, uh, they give you a campsite with a naturally fed. Um, hot tub by the hot springs there and everything else they have a couple of like you know like privacy sections if you will there's maybe 10 tubs you just camp do your thing keep it quiet right great place to um and then right above you wide open sky dude there was more stars than there was sky it fucking blew my mind as there was no light pollution it was just phenomenal and then after a while i didn't know if i was looking i didn't know what was going on because i had had mushrooms as well so it was one of those experiences <laughs> where we all ended up in the middle of a field laying on laying on um, blankets, like just, you know, staring at the sky. Right. It was, pretty, it was pretty rad. And then once I would say, like, now that I've been, I listened to a fuck ton of Slift, for those of you who haven't been keeping up with what's going on, the last album that we the album that we're doing for this show is Slift. When really tickled my ass pink when the wheel landed on it, because I knew I was going to get to see them at Desert Days. And um, now that I've seen them live and been listening to their music, if you're staring up at the stars with that shit on your head, oh, it would be amazing because all their videos and everything, they're all about space and all that cool shit. So um, did make it down to Desert Days, of course. Saw some saw some really good acts, um, but we'll get into it a little later. But the best act was Slift by a fucking long shot. Right on. Um, just amazing. Up against bands like Tame Impala, King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard. I don't remember all of it, but yeah, they, they won. They came out on top, but amazing shows. Nonetheless, saw fucking Reggie Watts, which was oh awesome. God. Like I've never, I would never, I would never intentionally go see his act just because that's, I don't know what it was about. And now that I've seen it, I wouldn't go either just because I don't, I'm not, no, I saw it. I'm like, this is cool. But he's fucking funny as hell. He does a ton of voices. Um, right. I didn't know any of that, but we're standing there at one thirty in the morning. Pretty sure. Yeah, I think I was on a little bit of acid that night. So yeah. standing there, just kind of coming down a little bit, you know. And um, it's a really trippy stage, the one that he was on. They were doing liquid lights to his act, which was like. <laughs> and Phil, uh, my friend there, made a damn good point. He was like, imagine you're Reggie Watts. And they say, hey, listen, we'll give you X amount of money to come out to Desert Days to do a one o'clock set in the morning to a bunch of people on drugs. And he's like. So you're saying I can do whatever I want. <laughs> and that's exactly what he did. We're standing there ways away, just kind of watching, you know, deciding if we're going to leave, you know, go home or not. And he's just like, I get up early in the morning, make a sandwich. I get up really early for the sandwich. I put the sandwich in the bag in the morning. And I'm like, holy fuck. He's just singing about a sandwich. And he's a goddamn millionaire. This is crazy. <laughs> and that was what stuck with me for the next four days. I was like, Hey, Phil, get up early, make a sandwich. <laughs> it's like fucking, <laughs> it was cool, man. It was, the way I would, I would encompass my, my time. And especially this desert days wasn't so much about the music. We had a shitload of fun. Yeah. It's just fucking fun. We laughed our asses off, fucked with people when I could. That was my favorite. I actually got to do a couple of like <laughs> like pop in stand up sets just around the camp. The people who didn't know I was just started ripping. Like twenty minutes later, I'm still going. Felt good to be able to do that. Like, you know? what do you mean? You just like went up to people? Well, I mean, we had some people. We 
you know how it is with we ended up with meeting up with Flanders and them, some other friends of ours who just take it to the max. They mm -hmm. brought a fucking teepee, right? And then they put um blow up pools inside the teepee, but didn't put any water and threw a bunch of blankets in there and shit. So it was basically just a chill zone. Um, but in front of the TP, they put up a, a movie screen, probably like I don't know, ten by ten, and then they had like a, a projector. At I don't know how this works, site? huh? At their campsite? Yeah, this is all at the fucking campsite. What the so, fuck? oh, dude, oh yeah, Phil's like, we're gonna camp with them, and I'm like, fuck, it worked out, but we got no sleep. They right. were the people. They were the people that were up at six in the morning. Like till six in the morning when I was taking a piss at five thirty and four thirty and two thirty because I'm an old fucking man now. It was just like, damn, someone is still up. But they were at another campsite, and I found out later it was these guys did the TP, <laughs> but at another campsite. I'm like, you guys are like a fucking virus, just floating around the campsite, keeping everybody awake. In any case, they had this cool spot, and so the first night on Thursday night before the festival officially started. They had this uh, projector that pushed out images onto the movie screen. And anyone, and they were right up against the road. So people, all kinds of people came by. And you walked in front of it and it like glitched out your image. You know, made it really trippy and shit. So Jesus Christ, everyone took it. We had tons of people come through our camp. Mm -hmm. So what happened was when we pulled up to camp, we didn't know this, but some kids from California who had been there the year before, set up pulled up no one was there yet pulled into the spot stretched their shit out all over the place yeah last year nobody was there so they had could spread out they well spread out. Yeah. flanders and his crew roll in and take over one side and then they tell us these kids went for a walk or something we didn't even know who was what we right. invaded their campsite we had no idea so basically we drove our tents our shit right in like all around these kids we encompassed them into our giant camp and we're like, hey, you guys with Flanders? And they're like, who? And we're like, hmm. hmm. Like, did we raid your shit? And they're like, yeah, it's cool. I'm like, no, 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 no. It's not cool. Like, we didn't know, blah, blah, blah. So long story short, these guys became, like, they were part of our camp. Right. Like, they took the picnic table, and we gave them one of our awnings, and they had shade. They didn't have, they weren't prepared a lot, but they're also from Southern California, used uh, to the okay. weather. Used, they just brought a ton of beer and a shitload of food. Never fed us. I was hungry the whole time. I was like, mmm, that looks good. They didn't feed us. But <laughs> they got they got me, they gave me a few beers. But they would just sit there, just these four dudes. And I would just walk by the table and just start going. Like every day I gave them a 20 minute set. And then other people would come around and hear the jokes and shit. Just riffing, having fun. Made me feel good. So they fed me beer. Oh. It was nice. Um, but yeah, that was a fucking hoot. Um, cool costumes, shit like that. And just a great fucking time, man. Great time. Awesome. I needed that shit. Reminds me why I put up with the bullshit I put up with every day. At work. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Yeah, it was fun. How how many days was the festival? The fest was officially three days from Friday, Saturday, Sunday. The first weekend that weekend that overlapped in October. At the beginning, you know, last week, whatever the fuck it was, yeah. Um, so two weeks, two weekends ago. And um Thursday night, they also have a stage in the campsite. So, okay. so there was a couple of shows Thursday night to get you warmed up. We checked those out. And then every night after the show and the festival ended at two in the morning, they had someone playing at that stage in the campsite. So you're not getting any fucking sleep. You're just not. It's bullshit. Oh, yeah. I mean, I think that, I mean, that's the whole point, right? It's just the party, Dude. fucking party. I mean, yeah, you try, but I mean, I'm not on meth. You know, I'm not just fucking at it for 36 hours, I mean, 72 hours. You should get some fucking meth. You know? I mean, I'm sure. Look at me. I already look like I'm on meth. I'm not taking it a step further, man. I'm good. <laughs> Fucking good. Hey, I made it this far in my life without doing meth. Well, I'm not going to get into it now. Hey, if it ties the room together, <laughs> dude, I don't want to be nobody. Any, I don't know. I don't think any. If anyone was on meth, I don't know where the fuck they were at five in the morning. Let's start going like to the a, bathroom like I me. Like that. I'm just trying to talk you into doing meth. <laughs> I don't. I don't like it at all. <laughs> and I'm defending myself. I, mean, I don't fucking need it. Yeah, Alex, I'm gonna get some meth. It's gonna be great. Yeah, it's good for you. It's fine. But um, yeah, then I, I hit you up because um, like I said, Slift is really cool and they're uh, coming through town. And I just was a yeah. day late on that. I well, wish I well, I mean, it's not your responsibility to tell me what's going on in my in the city I live in. But you know, thank you. I just you know, I want to put that on you. But uh I was I was 
if I wasn't, if I was just sitting around at home on my ass, I probably, I would have dug for a ticket and try to find one or like go there, yeah. see if someone was like selling a ticket. But I was at Oaks Park riding roller, uh, ro- riding rides and doing the haunted house thing. I mean, honestly, like I was like, well, at least he's having fun. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> it's like that's cool <laughs> it's one of those things if i was just at home like watching fucking movies and shit i've been like all right well that's what i'm doing <laughs> good luck oh, i would have i would have gotten on the phone to flanders and be like get him in <laughs> and flanders would have done it because he's flanders if you ever meet this guy i'm not going to give you any more of his name but flanders is all you need to know yeah and that fucking guy he gets it done he will get the cheapest ticket at a venue and the nosebleed the highest seat in the venue and then you have a, a ticket you have a floor ticket, and five minutes later, he's standing next to you. Don't ask me how he does it. But he's... he also met Slift, got an autograph poster, all that. And I was like, yeah, he could have gotten him in if he needed to. It wouldn't have been a problem. But yeah. um, he's just that fucking guy. I need to start hanging out with that guy, mainly because we live in the same city, and he's cool as shit, you know. <laughs> he goes, he's at every fucking show. Yeah. Like, I'm like, dude, did you know that so-and-so's in town? I'm like, yeah, I was there. I'm like, God damn, man. <laughs> at every show. <laughs> he's at every, I love it. I mean, it's the guy you want to know. Plus, what it is about him, he just rolls up. He's just, next thing you know, he's friends with the band. The band's French. He doesn't even speak yeah. French. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously, they speak a little English, but what the fuck? <laughs> I'm too intent. I'm not that guy. If I saw you in the band, he'd be like, good set, man. That's it. <laughs> yeah, that's, that, that, that's about as much I would say. Like, like I... I'm not that person. I'm I'm the kind of person that doesn't really want to know necessarily meet their idols, let's say. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I would if it was like right if they were like hanging out with people that I know and I'm there, I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna talk to you, but I'm not gonna go out of my way. I did talk to Father John Misty one time for an hour, and that was cool. That was it Jesus, was, for someone who doesn't want to talk to any idols, an hour's a long fucking time. <laughs> well, it was the first time I saw him, and I don't think you were there. Uh, it was at uh, Sasquatch, mm. and it was like when his first album came out, I think, and, or, or like a little bit after it. And he was like having this like set that was like pissing people off. Like he was like sit, singing and sitting down, like cross legged and like doing this motion, you know. And he's just like pointing at the crowd and going like this and like being a dick. And like, <laughs> but it was really funny. <laughs> he, 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 they were playing, like the band was playing. He was singing. And he goes, Stop, stop, everyone, fucking stop, stop. Look at those mountains. And then with like, keep on going <laughs> and then he he did that again he stopped another song he goes, stop 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 and then pointed at the concession stand and goes beer hot dogs no way and then started back up again like and like people were getting pissed and leaving i was like this guy is the funniest guy i've ever met all right <laughs> and then right after his set he had like a a meet and greet kind of thing you know like say hi sign a thing and I just happened to be walking by and he's standing there at the table by himself. And there's nobody there. No one is there because he pissed everyone off. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm going to go, I'm going to go talk to that guy. And I wouldn't wait in line, but there was no one there. And he was just kind of looking around like this, like, but I'm talking to that guy. And I ended up talking to him the whole time that he was supposed to be there. And not <laughs> a single fucking person came up. It was just him and I, and I was just talking to him. I was like, I thought your fucking set was hilarious. I loved your music. Like, what you were doing was awesome. I like, I loved every bit of it. And he was just like, yeah, I ate a bunch of pop brownies and I felt weird before I went on stage. I just had a bunch of pop brownies and I felt weird. I was like, oh, that was great. <laughs> I don't know if it's like more insulting when only one person comes by and Didn't they love your shit. But there was thousands that saw it, and you're like, "Fuck, I made friends with this guy." Like... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. shit! And then like That's we fucking funny. About, we ended up talking about D and T and like how cool it is, and I was just like, and just like we're just talking like we were talking like he wasn't just on stage. Like we were having a conversation like he's not who he is. You know what I mean? And I was right. just like. 
this guy's fucking cool. <laughs> like it's fucking crazy. Like I was just I didn't I didn't run into any. Okay, well I'll just say this. It's crazy when you go to a festival because as soon as these bands get off stage, at least for the rest of that day, they're walking around. They're yeah, checking they're, out yeah. acts and they're not going back. Well, a lot of them are just in the fucking crowd. I, I'd swear, I think, I didn't stop to ask, but I know, at least I believe, I stood in front of L.A. Witch for like five minutes, all four of them. Oh, really? And I was just like, well, if that's not them, they're in another band. And if they're not in a band, they should be in a band. And so that works for me. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> but it was it's cool. It's like they do that all the time. They'll even say on stage, like, hey, we're just checking out so-and-so's set. And I'm just like, man, that's fucking neat. You're on stage. Everyone looks at you like gods if you're having a good set. And then you come down and a lot of people don't even approach you. That's what's funny. You're just walking around like it's just like, weren't you just up there? But yeah, but I'm just some asshole with a band. I also work at fucking Safeway. You know, I mean, whatever. Right. I got to get back for Monday, you know, I'm like oh, that sucks. Just people just wearing leather today. That's all. Singing song. They just yeah. a lot of bands seem like a lot of them seem really humble. You know, when, when you're walking around without a bodyguard. Yeah, not that you you know at a psych fest, what you know, but anyway, still you get what I'm saying. Pretty humble, I mm -hmm. like that. That's cool. That you fucking ran into him. I know what you're talking about. That little tent where the where the record store is, like the G, yeah, <laughs> yeah, right, right by the main stage. Like I'm yeah. contractually obligated to be here. Yeah, that's what it was, and then no one showed up. <laughs> and I was like, I'm gonna, I'm fucking talking to that guy. I was but a funny. Guy. If he told, <laughs> Sorry, and like, and, and 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 when he was playing, every time people would leave, I would get closer. And closer and closer. I'm like, I love this because I'm sarcastic as fuck. I don't think anything fucking serious. I don't give a shit. I thought like I was like, you're playing to me. Everyone else could leave. Just keep on doing like, foot <laughs> me going. off, jack fucking make jack jack off fucking hand signals. Make fun of the mountain <laughs> and where you are in the scenery. I don't give a shit. Like keep on going. Like it's fucking hilarious. <laughs> I, I, I like I'm not gonna tell you to, but if you do, go ahead. I mean, it's everything's great. Like, <laughs> and he he wakes up the next morning, and be like, "Fuck, I had a horrible set. I ended up talking to some dude, the only one guy who thought I was great for an hour. <laughs> like, I need to get my shit together." <laughs> what you and thought was not... amazing was a wake up call for him. <laughs> yeah, right. And like, it's not. I'm not even like a super fan. I like his shit. And every time he puts on an album, I, I enjoy it. But I'm not like a super fan or anything. Right. I just like, I was just like, when I happened to watch it, I was like, this is fucking awesome. Like, I felt like I was watching something like, like, like something incredible that people are going to talk about in 20 years. Really, I was just walking, watching someone having like a weird pot brownie trip. <laughs> <laughs> like, watching somebody watching bomb someone, is what you're watching <laughs> yeah i was watching someone in a, in a weird mood <laughs> and i was like perfect <laughs> that's the one rule like i guess as a musician or someone who just performs for a living a performer you would have if you're going to do drugs you just have to get used to doing your act on drugs because yeah. there's that there's that one 45 minute spot or an hour and 15 spot that you have to be sober for and the rest of the day you don't, so I don't know. You probably it pro you probably give up on being sober for your shows pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. I would. It seems that way. I've never met him. Every time a musician dies, they even nowadays the more popular they, popular they are when they die, the less they don't even say what happened. Like right. when Taylor Hawkins died. No, I had no. I don't know, follow them, so I didn't know. But it was just like, oh yeah, he was a big time. He had problems. It was like, oh. But they even talk about it. Like, I just died from drugs. Like, another another one bites of dust, you know, type thing. It's like, it's not even uncommon. Like, people just assume right away. Yeah. You know, well, like, when, 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 like, especially a musician or really any known famous person in any level, anytime they die and then they, they say death, like, they have, they haven't said it yet. They haven't said, and they, and it just never comes out. I, I just think, O O D or suicide. That's just like my and the two right. things automatically come to mind. And it's usually one of the two. Because if they go, oh, he got in a car wreck, or they got in she was on a plane wreck, or whatever, it's like you know. Right. Yeah, otherwise it would be some tragic, some tragic news. Other, yeah. yeah, you know what I mean? Like how they died would be the tragic part. But if it's just that they died, then it's like 
that's all they say. But like so and so passed away. They're like, uh huh. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's that's crazy. Is like how well, like I said, I don't dig into people's lives. I don't really give a shit. You know, no more than they give give a fuck about me. So it's yeah. like I don't none of my business, man. Having fun doing drugs, that's that's on you. But yeah. it's just crazy how many people like mm-hmm. do die. One thing that fucked me up still is Philip Seymour Hoffman. Like it just catches. I'm just like really. Like I've said it before, but it fucks me up. Cause it just one day I was like mopping a floor at 35 years old because I'm killing it in life, and I hear on the fucking radio that he dies. I'm like, huh? That fucking guy? He is a heroin addict? Yeah. Like I would have done heroin with him just to fucking hang out with him. It was like, I like that fucking guy. Like, yeah. I, I mean, I, I just blew me. I was like, whoa. I'm like, wait, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let's make a list of how many people that are famous aren't on drugs, just so I can prepare myself mentally. So I won't fall in love with these fucking performances and be like, oh, he'll be around forever. Because that fucked me up. I like that guy. He's a fucking method actor. He was a method actor like a motherfucker. Like, Oh, yeah. He was. Whoa. Uh... Yeah. <laughs> that blew my mind. But most people who die famously, like especially musicians, it never really surprises me. Because like I said, you're, you only have to be you don't even have to be sober for your act. If you're behind yeah. a fucking drum kit, like maybe you need to be whatever you are to do fucking do this for the rest of your life i don't know i think it, it only matters if it's if it like fucks with like the band and you being able to show up for shows and rehearsal and that's yeah then it's a fucking problem right then right. it's a problem when it's only when it becomes a problem within the band and your performances and that kind of shit so basically as long as you're doing your job no one gives a shit about what you're yeah, doing yeah, if you're there. functional if you can if you can bang a bunch of dope and then show up for your shows and shit like that. It's like, it's kind of like your bandmates are kind of like, you know. I'm pretty sure you just described my current company's drug policy. (laughs) (laughs) As long as you can answer these fucking phone calls, we don't give a shit if you're sucking your neighbor's dick to get heroin money. Just, you know. I think that's, I mean, that's kind of what it is, right? (laughs) That's really how life is. All of life. Like, if you could go show up and do whatever, Minus, like, the small people around you. They're not really going to give a shit. Like, no. if I was banging a bunch of dope and doing a bunch of crazy shit like that, but I still showed up to my job every single day and no one really knew about it, no one would care. No one would know. No one would care. Nobody <laughs> does care until it becomes their fucking problem. Exactly. Ta-da! I love that line. That's my favorite. I say that to my customers all day long. Not in a mean way, but just like, my bill's fucked up, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, listen, we got to be honest. Nobody gives a shit. And they're like, you're right. I'm like, cool. So you want a phone or what? <laughs> Nobody cares. <laughs> Nobody fucking cares. <laughs> That's why when you try to call about your bill problems, you're waiting two hours. But if you're trying to buy something, you get someone within 30 seconds. Okay? Okay. So nobody gives a shit. Just don't let your shit fuck up my shit, and we're good. That's the sad reality of life. <laughs> <laughs> I really want to be president just for a day, just one day. I'll get shot by dinner time, but fuck, it'll be fun. I'll just be on a mic, just like, and another thing, and another thing. <laughs> if I was president for a, for a day, I'd call him sick. Just for that day. <laughs> nah, sorry. Can't cool be president. If you, got a, if you got elected and you just called out. Yeah. Like every day, like you never like for a few weeks, and then they just let you go. Like he never showed up. <laughs> He's a no show. <laughs> we didn't know we had a government policy on sick days, but eh, too many call outs. <laughs> <laughs> like, like as the president, you make the policy. Yeah. <laughs> Any government official that has doesn't show up for this amount of time, it's automatically um, impeached, impe- impeached or whatever, fired. Um, and then you just. You just do that. <laughs> yeah, you impeach yourself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's what Listen, I would do. <laughs> we have a forty-five day policy. It's been forty-three. I'm not gonna fuck this up now. Okay. Yeah. Two more days, and I'm out of here. <laughs> I just wanted to know that enough people liked me. That's all I needed. <laughs> That's all I needed. <laughs> I can go back to work at my regular job. <laughs> I got forty-five days paid vacation. <laughs> <laughs> Rode around in a limo. <laughs> it was great. Yeah. They busted out that suit, and I said, "Fuck this! I'm never going to work." Yeah, I went. I didn't know I had to wear a suit. I, 
I had no idea. <laughs> I, you never seen those like. Well, you know how a lot of people work from home, so like they're just wearing the top of their suit and the bottom they're wearing like gym shorts or nothing at all. It would be cool if someone was president and that's what they did. And every time they walked away from the mic, you noticed like you could see their bare ass with the shirt stays tied to their socks and stuff. Yeah. You know, but <laughs> like he's not wearing pants. <laughs> Are those Crocs and socks? What the fuck? <laughs> Is that what you do? No, but if I was president, I might, because I want to represent the people that, you know, I want to connect. Yeah, yeah, real people. Yeah, Crocs and Socks is where it's at. Crocs okay. and Socks. That's the name of the, that's the name of this episode, Crocs and Socks. Oh, shit. That was easy. It only took 35 <laughs> minutes. That's great. <laughs> uh, that, that could be like a, like a, like a little kid's like replacement uh, cuss word. Ah, Crocs and Socks. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit brought to you by county inmates that's fun yeah oh so any fucking way man how you been i haven't seen you in a while i've been i've been pretty good um just been doing the damn thing i uh you know like i said i went in, to the haunted houses uh here in portland for those of you that don't know what oaks park is it's um it is like a roller skating rink and then certain parts of the year they have um like a kind of a mini fairish kind of thing and they have rides and you know fair shit food shit like that you know the, the stuff that you would think but it's pretty small and other, like and in parts of the summer you, like you could there's like it's by the water and you could go down and swim if you want to swim in that in the in the milky in that in that shit which i had done a bunch <laughs> and look at me yeah. Like, oh yeah yeah you can go swim there a lot of people do that's the same water that runs through downtown Portland, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. And it goes from north to south, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh huh. All right. I'll be watching you. From the a lot of people do, like, like in the summer, you, you see people boating and jet skiing, and yeah, yeah. it's it's fine. It's fine. I do all the time. Like swimming in the fucking Hudson. <laughs> It feels like a Seinfeld episode. <laughs> I, I've been down there during. I know it, it is. It's like <laughs> I, know, I know what you're talking about. But uh, um, I know I, I a lot of there's been multiple summers I went down there and just you know hung out, jumped off the dock. Other people are doing it. Too. Like it's yeah. I I really I honestly didn't know there was a place to go swimming down there. That's cool. Oh I mean, yeah, I don't give a fuck either. If someone else is in there first. I'll jump in. That's kind of yeah. There's like there's a little beach that what goes. For a couple of miles right on that's cool but anyway there's um at, Hall at halloween i always knew that they did a haunted house and they do like most places they do three of them you know or they do multiple ones and uh callie's brother um was working at it like um as a construction worker he was building props and hmm. and, and like the rooms and the haunted house uh, uh as a whole you know putting the lights in doing that kind of thing because that's what he he's a builder he's a construction he, he he's a construct uh, contractor that's what he is that's the real word he's a constructor he's a constructor and uh so we he was able to get us tickets and shit but before the haunted house we we uh, rode a couple rides and we rode the uh roller coaster that you and i rode before that little one that one was fun because it's like how long does that take 20 seconds 30 seconds it's like a really yeah. quick one like you, you you and i wrote wrote it together a couple yeah of sketchy times. as fuck yeah absolutely yeah but, i mean it was pretty it's pretty fun and then um then there was this um the atmosphere ride i don't know if you ever seen that it's huge it's like it looks like a look kind of looks like a plunger like a thing everyone sits in a circle like this you know you're and then like and you go up and you I think we did four loops whoa and, and like each loop got kind of faster and then they slowed down pretty quickly and then and then they just leave you hanging upside down for Ooh. like 15, mm. 15 seconds and um no. yeah i was screaming like there was little kids all over the, in the line waiting you know because every other turn for the ride they did they call it uh, the 360 or the 180 and the 180 was for kids and it only only went halfway up and then and then the other turn the other time they did it, it was 360 for adults or people that wanted to go all the way around at least right 
And there's so there's kids waiting around and I'm screaming, fuck you, fuck you. My dick's falling off. What the fuck? I'm just screaming. And Callie's like, she's in the air. She's like, shut up. I'm like, I think I'm going to die. This is fucking <laughs> 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 um, <laughs> but they um callie and her brother and sister and her sister's boyfriend went on this ride that's like the zipper so oh. it's like it's like the zipper but like a ferris wheel kind of like smaller ferris wheel and uh, you're in the cages and they're spinning and like i can't i can do big spins or like, or roller coaster spins, but I can't be in a cage that's just spinning or doing that like that thing that like it goes so fast that you're plastered against the wall, you know, whatever. Like that run, yeah. I mean, can't do that either. Like, I could do the atmosphere because it's big, long, like fucking. It's like kind of gives you the same feeling as riding like an actual roller coaster. You're not like you're not like spinning. You're just doing big loops, right? I, I equated it to like almost like a tire swing until it goes upside down. I yeah. haven't done that, but it feels like a tire swing. Oh yeah, we went all the way, and it's not like super. It's it does it goes a little quick, but it's not like fucking. You're not like no spinning. no right it's doing like big loops, and yeah, a, a tire swing is like the best way to describe it. Actually, like I think yeah, that's a good way to describe it. I've been on those, just not one that went upside down. And fucking hats to you, man. I couldn't. I don't think I could do it. I just don't think I want to do it. Yeah, it was pretty intense. Like we, it got like we were with a bigger group, like um, Callie's brothers. Callie brother, Callie's brother had a bunch of friends with him, and there's a few people that were in line that were his friends that peeled off because they were watching it. They're like, no. We're not doing. I'm not doing that. <laughs> and they're like, they're like, mm -mm. and they they jumped over the, they hopped over the fence, over the little chain fence. And they're right. like, I'm not doing that. <laughs> well, I, mean, I was I was sitting in line. I was like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> well, they have they have fixed versions of those rides in major amusement parks, and they have the one in Six Flags in Jersey. That's the tallest one they've ever built, and but it doesn't go upside down. It goes pretty, it goes close, like real fucking close. I've been on it twice or three times. And the last time I did it, my dad went with me. And this guy has this fucking thing for puking in bushes, like a flower gardens. He always hits a flower garden. I don't know what it is, but right as we're walking out of the ride, there's this little, little thing of bushes, small, cute little bushes, just like, <laughs> it's like Fuck yeah. <laughs> At least he's able to hold it and not puke on the ride. Well, I know. I was right next to him. I'm like, fuck, man. But I hate it. But you ever been like on a ride and you know it's over? Like, you know, you're like, you're done. You're like, I got I to gotta get off. It's over. Like, you're fucking done. You're like, I got to get off. I got to get off. I got to get off. Like, you start. Yeah. I That feeling is what I try to avoid. If I get there, I'll be miserable for a couple of weeks about rides. So, <laughs> But I, I learned something recently about um, my so my dad my mom doesn't really go for roll like she doesn't like um she likes certain roller coasters i found out after all this time she's always ridden them with us but she always closes her eyes and screams her head off it's yeah. her therapy but um we told her like you should lean into the ride like you're riding a bobsled that'll help and right. you should open your eyes when you can because that'll help too so she started like doing that and um, we got to this one ride at, when I, we were out a few weeks ago. Called, it's Batman. It's old school, hang down coaster, shitload of inversions. It's like flying an F-16, man. It's intense. And no one wanted to ride it. My mom's like, I'd ride that. My mom's like five foot. She's, you know, yeah. she's in, on the, on, she's a little older. And uh, I was just like, yeah. I said, I'd make you a deal. I said, I'll ride it with you, but it's got to be the front row so I can see straight out. Because otherwise right. you're looking at the shit and the people in front of you, you can't see anything. It's, you get dizzy. She was like, okay. So here I am. I got my mom on this like really intense ride that my dad and no one else will ride. And she's just like, Woo! I was like, fuck, you're getting better with age. You're like, fine wine. This is great. <laughs> I have to keep up with her. Like, that's the thing. Like, all right, well, I guess I'm into looping, looping coasters again because I can't bitch out on this. My mom will call me the fuck out. She's got two hip replacements. I can't say shit to her. <laughs> like, <laughs> It's fucking cool. I like to. I like that shit. Well, that's rad, man. Anything yeah, and then, uh, um, haunted houses. Haunted houses were cool too. Oh, um, um, the last one we did, or second to last one, one of the ones we did, um, 
um, our group kind of like got split on split in two or something, you know, mm-hmm. and we ended up in front of these like probably 20 year old kids, you know, they were like this two a, a couple, just two kids, probably like 20 or something like that. And they both were scared. Even like the, the guy was like, no, I can't, I can't do it. So I just like stepped in front of them. And I was walking and I was like, and Callie was behind me like this, you know, grabbing on my shirt, like doing this. And she's like, go faster, go faster. And as soon as she said that, I just like started walking really slow. Because I like this shit. Yeah. Yeah. It's like I I treat haunted houses like I would treat a psychedelic drug. I go, okay, this is the drug. This isn't real. Like it's how I'm feeling isn't like how I'm going to always feel. Right, not, you know, like it's just if I see anything, it's not really there <laughs> most of the time. Um, you know, um, this is just part of the ride, go with it, and that's how I treat haunted houses. So I walk around, I go, That's cool, someone had to build that, right? Like, like that's awesome. Like, this fucking huge werewolf pops out of the like, just like 15 foot werewolf pops out of the wall and then goes Raw! over you, and I'm like, That's fucking awesome. And Callie's like, go, go, fucking go. And I'm like, cool. <laughs> really good architecture. Just want to yeah. say. <laughs> yeah, but I just, I thought I'd fuck with her and fuck with the, peop- the people that got scared that made us go in front of them. Oh, they were like, and, you know, they couldn't get around me because I'm big and it's a small space. And I was, I was just like, going really slow. <laughs> and everyone started freaking out. I was like, this is fun. Yeah, those are fun. It's like, it's like a mindset, like you said. To me, it's an adrenaline hit. So it's just like when someone jumps out, I'm like, you know, I'm almost kind of like, come on, give it to me, give it to me. Come on, like, you know, come on, come at me, motherfucker. Yeah. Like, you know, a little bit. Um, I like it like that. But at the same time, I'm, I'd have to say I'm a lot like you where I'm just looking around like, that's fucking cool, man. They all put in a lot of work for just a 30-day yeah. haunted house. Like, <laughs> is anyone going to acknowledge this craftsmanship or are we just going to scream and cry? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, that's yeah. fucking cool man right on dude you guys is there any other um like haunted houses or shit you'll hit up before the sun the season the month is over? i know there's there is more and there's another there's another good one at the convention center that i've been to before a couple of times mm-hmm. and it's like the quality is equally as good cool and um I've been to another one, some other ones that aren't as great, but um, I don't know, maybe. I know there, are, I know of them. I just don't know if I'll be able, if, if I'll get to go or not. But well, we'll I know that like usually in every state they have like some famous farms and sure. like, farms do them. We have one not far from here. They do like a Bates Motel. They actually have like five different ones you do, um, but they did one that was outside. Man, it must have been like a mile long. Like, wow. really? Just w- it kept going through the woods and it started to rain and it was dark. It was coarse and foggy and it was really good. Like, half of it was just the, the weather was shit. So it added to it. And yeah. Like, like, little rain droplets and like even the monsters were wet. You know, it was just like, ah, fuck. Like, oh. <laughs> COVID, ah, like, get the fuck away from me. <laughs> no one likes a wet monster. No one likes a wet monster. Mm, maybe maybe <laughs> <laughs> swamp thing um, um that's red monsters yeah so um we um i had mentioned slift earlier in our show but that is the album that we landed on before uh on our last show on the wheel and uh as i said i was really excited because i got to see them so we're talking about the band slift and alex do you have any idea how to pronounce the goddamn name Ooh. of the album it's u m m o n and i didn't hear anyone um, say it out loud um the uh <laughs> there alex and i both tried through our our um you know our limited channels of trying to find a bio on these guys we didn't see one um i i yeah, i just googled it they, they, they have a, a, a wikipedia page oh, all right so yeah they um yeah they're from they're, they're french which I didn't know. Sounds like you did, but I didn't know until I looked it up. And they started in 2015. Mm. So they've you know, they only been going for seven seven years. So right. Seven, almost eight years. And this and this album that we're listening to actually came out in 2020, right over the pandemic. 
Right. So if it if they would have been at five years, yeah, and, and they were all able to go to shows, that all of this that's happening now would have taken place two years ago. Right. And yeah. Exactly. So they and, would have caught fire a little quick. Like they're catching yeah. fire, in my opinion. They're catching fire. Um, tickets they are have, starting to sell out. They're right. on tour in the U.S. right now. Um, they did Desert Days, and then they're doing the other Psych Fest that happens in America, which is Levitation. That's in Austin, Texas. That's that's around. That's over Halloween with other bands like uh, Frankie and the Witch Fingers and the OCs are on the bill. Mm. They're a part of that as well. So what they're doing is they're basically hanging out in America for the whole month of October until yeah. they have their set at Levitation. And um, so they did, you know, they were over there. I think they're in Idaho now or something, but they uh, they're coming around. So if you're East Coast, there are some shows that are coming up in the next two weeks. I personally very much, if you're into this shit, go see them because the next time they come through, will not the tickets will not be twenty dollars, and you will not be seeing them in a small venue. No right. fucking way. There's no way. Um, I could be crazy. That's fine. But after seeing them live, wow. I was on acid, but I was on a little bit of acid. It wasn't totally like, oh, the acid's what's making me fall in love with them. I liked the album before I saw them, but the show. Even though it was like a date, it was a it was a like a, a dinner time show. Mm -hmm. So the sun went down, like as they were playing, right? Like they oh, were doing cool. the liquid light visuals behind them, but it wasn't even the visuals. It was just their music. Like they have that fucking rhythm. You hear it in the album. It doesn't to me. The album doesn't sound like a couple of songs. If you listen it from front to back, it just goes. It feels like. The music videos are basically like some dude getting shot through space and going through the universe and running into different, like, you know, like different situations out in the atmosphere. Really fucking rad. And that's how I'd explain the music. It's like right. shot through fucking space at a million miles an hour. And they're just, you know, along with you, like, and the drummer's fucking. But they're a three piece. They make a lot of noise for a three piece, man. That, that's awesome. I love that when um, I love a three piece. Like uh, the band, the. Uh... Un, the unsane who we did before they, they're a three-piece right the three-piece and slow, I, I like uh, slow th sloth thrust or however we say yeah. them they're three-piece make a lot of noise yeah, yeah. so um fucking i anyway and upon uh, other apart from seeing them live which i'll just tell you if you can see them go see them if you're into it um but the, the album i I mean, I'm I'm the kind of like just fuck yeah like <laughs> it's just for me man it's right up my alley it really reminds me of the OCs it's just that it's not the OCs but they found like a like a line right next to them you know it just feels like they yeah found they're like they're to me they're they they have that they're like they're like indie stoner metal is yeah. really like because because they they have a bit more grit to them. You know, especially yeah. on this album. Well, listen to the other ones. They have a lot more, bit more grit. Like, you have a few songs where there's some screaming and yelling, that kind of thing. Yeah. And, and but they do fit into the King Gizzard and the Lizard Gizzard and the OCs and, like you said, the other, the, you know, the, that kind of vibe of rock right. and roll. But they, they have a little bit more of a stoner metal kind of vibe. So it's like in the stoner metal, <laughs> you know? Right. And obviously, I'm into that, and that's why I say they're huge. They're going to be big, but hey, most people don't even listen to indie stoner metal. So, within the realm of that music and us who get into that shit, they're going to become a bigger deal. Will they ever be fucking taking up, you know, filling in the space of Fleetwood Mac? No, they will not. They'll never be that fucking. I don't imagine they'll ever pull something like that off. But right. really exciting that they're out there. And they just brought a new flavor. It was just really refreshing at that at that festival. Like I said, we saw Tame Impala, we saw King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard. Those guys are the kings of psychedelic rock. But fucking Sliff just came in and kicked the goddamn door down. And we we're just like, nope, we're here. And it was like, and everyone, the stage wasn't big enough, man. I mean, people were like trying to. It was stacked. It was against the beach. People were like looking at it from a side angle. The people just yeah. kept coming, man. They knew. Everyone fucking knew. You know, it was just like, it's that's the show. Get over there right now. It's happening. I don't know if they've been in America before, but like this album, it seems like it's like, that's the album. This is the one that's putting them on the map. Right. And they're playing the shit out of it right now. So, of course, me, I'm like, 
Oh, I got to see him again. I got to see him. Fuck this. I got to see him again. So I'll be leaving work early next week and going down to Baltimore because I'm a dirty little whore. Right here, the tickets are eighteen dollars. That's that's a good deal, baby. I'm always in for a good deal. I'm a Groupon guy. So, I'm a Groupon guy. <laughs> I am. My mom, my mom and I are going to catch hockey this week, and she's like, "Tickets were eighty dollars." I'm like, "Oh, so we're not going?" She's like, "No, I found a fucking Groupon, half price." I'm like, "Sweet, we're going to see the Flyers." <laughs> cool. Eighty bucks, though, man. People pay that. That's crazy. No, our team sucks. They haven't even played an official season game yet, and we know they suck. This is the only time people are going to pay 80 bucks to see this fucking bag of shit. But it's opening day. Yeah. Um, back to back to music. Um, <laughs> yeah. So they're they're playing. They're hitting the, um, the East Coast. The, the, um, they'll be ending in Texas. So of the five people that uh, watch our show right now, um, if two of you happen to be into it, check them out. Yeah. Um, yeah, man. That's a it's a good album. I listen to it a lot because, you know, we had a couple of weeks and I, I listened to it all I, quite a bit and um and at first it was just like all right that, this is good I like it a lot but some of the slower parts I was like kind of wish it would just be the same and then I kept on listening to it and I kept on listening to it and then I was just like yeah then I got on the ride and I realized so I was like okay because at first I was like oh it was kind of picks me up and lets me off, picks me up and lets me off. And then I was just like, no, I'm just going to go with it, go, go through the valleys with them, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And, um, yeah. It's a great fucking album for sure. Um, I listened to some of the other stuff and I would say this one is, I think I, I agree with you. I think, I think this is the album. Yeah. This is um, the one that's going to put them on. This is their, this is the one everyone's paying attention to. They're playing this album live. Like this is what they're playing live. Yeah. They're playing the whole album, I think. Um, um I like um the first track, the the album's namesake. Yes. Uh, and I like it's coming. Um Citadel the, on a satellite. They're really yeah. I I'm gonna be fair, but I'll just pick out someone. Citadel and a satellite is one they made a music video for. Hyperion, they made another cool music video for. I'm not gonna. I'm honest. I'm just gonna be fair. In all fairness, I there isn't. I don't have a favorite song on here. If I had to pick one, it would be number the first one, the title. You know, the title one, and then lions, tigers, and bears. Yeah. But I. I mean, I just. I seriously, I'm just gonna go ahead and say, just give me the whole fucking album, man. I don't right. care. And when you see them live, then you realize, like you said, you're right. I'm not gonna argue with you, man, because when I first listened to this album before I saw them live, I was like, all right. Some songs are better than others. Just give it to me. Give me all the fast stuff. Give me that. Because two of them are jams. I think the first one's over five minutes and the last one's like 12 minutes long. It's a, it, The album's an hour and 12 minutes. Yeah. Keeping in mind, a vinyl record can only hold 40 minutes of music. Right, yeah. You made a double fucking album, basically. Double fucking album, yeah. Right. And so when you see them live and they play this album, you realize it's just set up for a ride. You're, and it's so mm -hmm. fucking good when you see it live because you're just like, Whoa, whoa, whoa. And the whole time you're just up and fucking down. You're like, this is great. They don't stop. They don't say, oh, thank you very much for coming. Fuck that. It's like, nee, 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 nee. is that a French accent? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that was a French accent, was it? <laughs> hey, I've been stuck in this fucking country for 20 years, man. I got no accents left, but I'm doing my best. They're that all broken funny. and shit. But yeah. <laughs> Even even I get paid for the attempt. All right. Um, no, they were. That's a band you got to see live. You come back and listen to the record and you're 100 percent in love with it. That's all there is to it. But you can love them without having to see them, too. But if you like it, that's why that's why I said, obviously, I missed the boat a little bit. I was just like, shit. <laughs> I was like, I should have because, you know, me, I'd have been like, I got your ticket. Go. <laughs> just go. Yeah. Oh, Yeah. <laughs> It's one I of those don't get this excited about a band. I was like, fuck, this is this is rad. Well, it's just like like I said, if I was I'm already doing something, I'm gonna do it. Just because it's like of course. other people or playing. Even if I even if Flanders was like even if Flanders was like, I ha I got a I have a ticket for you. Like I, I found one. I'm just like, hey, I'm we're I'm doing a thing already. Well, but, dude, if it was meant to be, you would have been there. But you just get I was so excited. I was just like, oh, and this is stupid. But a fucking long shot. If he is just playing with his pud and watching TV, here you go, man. Which is usually what I'm doing. So I, that's what I had. A, yeah, it was a chance. It would have made sense for me to tell you. And that's why I did it. <laughs> you had a haunted house, you know, damn near vomiting experience. And I think that's great. 
Okay. I mean, fucking A, man. Listen, in all seriousness, you'll get your chance to see them. It'll be rad when you yeah, come I'm through. Sure. Yeah. But it's fucking, it's also, not to sound cheesy, but it's a fucking great time when you're hanging out with your people and having fun at shit that doesn't usually exist like a haunted house. So fucking get it where you can. Hell yeah, right. man. But I just happen to be, I've just, uh, I love that I'm in, that I'm at the age that I'm at in my life and I continue to love music. That's I'm just thankful for that. Yeah. I love that I'm getting older and I'm gravitating towards being that guy over there with the beard that looks like Santa. It doesn't even look like he could stand up for 20 minutes without stretching and taking a nap. Old as fuck into the music. That's where I'm heading. I don't care how young the kids are at the shows. I'll be that old guy just being like, been listening to music live for his fucking 80 years. Who gives a shit? Somebody hold me up. <laughs> Somebody hold me up. <laughs> I, I mean, seriously, like, Actually, Phil made a good point. I have a problem with my, like, I can't stand up for very long anymore. Like, my feet legit fucking kill me from all oh, the really? standing up over the years. So I couldn't do an eight-hour shift on a sales floor. Not going to happen. He made a point. He was like, dude, seriously, you get a medical condition for that, you can sit down. They'll let you sit in the handicap seating. That's all there is to it. And I was like, yeah. There's the only problem with a handicap seat is that it's in the middle, like in these, they're in the middle of the show. Well, everyone's standing up. Yeah. So then you would see me standing up and be like, well, wait a minute. Why are you in there if you can stand up? I'm like, oh, you got a fucking point. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Best did thing you hurt, can do with. Did, did it hurt to stand up for that? For like a, a set? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, fuck yeah. But well, you do it. It feels like you, you do do a lot of walking at these festivals from camp to the festival and the farting around and it's on a beach. They got a man-made lake there and there's a beach and on one end is the big stage and on the other end is the other stages. And you have to walk in between the two. And immediately Phil and I were like, all right, all right, all right. Who's playing where, how many fucking trips do we have to go back and forth? Cause this is bullshit. And like, we're just, right. you know, when you're, when you're younger, like fuck 10 years ago at Sasquatch, we did like 15 laps around Sasquatch. Oh, yeah. It's like, and it was like, it was nothing. It was just like. Now we're planning accordingly. We're like, okay, we're doing this and we're doing that. Now we're getting the bathroom on the way to here. So we don't have to do any more standing. And then we'll find a chair. And it's just like the end of three Honestly, days. Honestly, that's the, that's the reason why I just, I haven't been to a festival. And the last festival I went to was Sasquatch when I talked to the father. When I talked father to John Misty, father, yeah. Yeah, when I talked to my father. <laughs> and, um, father. That's, that, that's the last time I went to a festival just because I'm like, I don't know, just back and forth and all these people and you know, I'm I'm more of like you could like you like you saw Sliff and it was amazing. And they're they're probably like you like you you're not I don't think you're underselling it at all. I, I think they're probably awesome live. But I will I want to see their show at their show, not at a festival. Like, that's and and that's how I feel about most festivals, and that's those festivals I've been to was mainly not to see a band. It was mainly I'm going with people. We're gonna do we're gonna, we're gonna get a little spunky. We're gonna do this. We're gonna do that. We're gonna huh, fucking. It's gonna be fun. I never went to Sasquatch to see a band like. <laughs> What? <laughs> I, 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 I like I, I didn't look at the list and be like oh i'm going because of this band and that band i was like i'm going with friends and we're gonna have a fucking good time you know so i'll i'm gonna go ahead and uh, so here's what i'll say about that i have i have slowly over the years come to that realization and that is what this festival was all about there was some good stuff on the bill but as i've learned over the years and i say you'll hear me say a lot at a festival it's not about the bands that are on the bill it's not about the bands that like me i'm like oh cool they're going to be there oh cool they're going to be there that's you know great keep in mind i buy my tickets for this festival before they ever release the lineup right they're like 99 dollars or some shit because yeah. no one knows what's going to be like hey anybody want an early bird we don't even know who we're booking yet and you're like i trust you here's my money and right. if you don't, you just sell the fucking thing and you can make money on it. So it does, Yeah, yeah, that's the thing. Yeah. You could if you're a financial guy. Obviously, I'm not. So <laughs> I'm fuck all about money. But I would say this. I ran into some people that you've met to, these like really big festival heads that are friends of ours, Phil's and Flanders and et cetera. 
And one of these guys' names is Goldbeard, and I've met him slowly over the years. He's out of Seattle. Um, cool dude. If you've noticed, everyone has a nickname. We're kind of like a mafia, but we don't kill people. I don't even know if anyone knows my name, but they know that I'm there. Um, just a little, you can see the rooster going through the crowd. Right. But in any case, um, he said, we were like, yeah, we're going around four or five o'clock, but the shows were starting anywhere from noon to two. Right. And, and you know, in the afternoon. And we were like, nah, fuck that. We're not going in that early. Got to stand. It's a long goddamn day. It's a 12 hour shift. That's how yeah. I look at it. It's a 12 hour right. shift. Fuck you. No. Um, and if you're not on like anything that gives you, you know, that, you <laughs> like my feet hurt, but they also have a personality right now, so that's okay. But if you're just sober for three days, you'd be out by day one. It would Oh yeah, work. you wouldn't even make it through. No, you gotta have a little something that's just like, Wee, I'm walking on a mushroom. Woohoo. Yeah. yeah. Gotta be like that. But to your point, I a hundred percent agree with you now. You go to have fun and it's a smorgasbord of bands. Yeah. You're going to to see new acts and to catch some unique shit from acts you already know. And that's the fun. Of that, that's what makes it so goddamn fun. Really? It's just like you're with your friends and you're fucking around and you have nothing to I mean, nothing to worry about unless you took too much of this or whatever. So right, that's the biggest celebration is when I, me, I don't take too many drugs and everyone else is like, he's safe. We're good. We're going to have a good night with the babysit this fucking crazy idiot. Help, help, I need help. Help, help, help. help. Well, when, it, when it came to the acid, this is what's funny because last time we did this, Phil was like, he's he gave me it took I took too much again and it fucked up the wean set for him and I felt real bad. So this time he came up to me and he was like, he was like, um, he's like, so we're all gonna we're all gonna take a half or we're all gonna take a whole tab. And and I was like, and I was like, okay, and he's like, not you. And I was like, okay. He's like you get a half and he put it on his finger and I was like, well, maybe I should. He's like, you get a half. I was like, all right. <laughs> In most cases, I wouldn't let someone half my age tell me what to do, but I listened to him on this one. Well, like, yeah, he's, he's an expert. <laughs> he's my fucking babysitter. He's like, uh-uh, we're not doing this. Well, baby. and that's the thing. It's like, he was like, I don't want to have to take care of you. Like, right. <laughs> And I don't want anyone to take care of me. If you know anything about, you do, but other people who know about hallucinogenics, you kind of get this like, it's like an adrenaline rush. You're like, maybe I should take a little bit more. And you're like, maybe you fucking shouldn't. I'm like, okay, I won't. Yeah, it's just, it's just like, a, I shouldn't have had that last drink. You know, right. it's that same thing. Like, I shouldn't have snorted that last kilo of Coke, you know? <laughs> <laughs> There's a blizzard in my nostrils. Yeah. But what's funny is, is like, I, it feels like we'll have more later if we need it. I was like, okay. And so I took my half. And by the time we got into the venue, we did it at camp. By the time we got down to the venue, about a 10 minute walk, we walk in and I just, I don't have a, there's a picture I can send to you. You need to see this costume. But anyway, there's a bunch of picture that, you know, those costumes where you put them on and then the legs don't look like your legs. Yeah. Oh yeah. Right? Like it looks like you look like you're something else. So there's a bunch of people that there's 10 of these guys dressed like cowboys they look like cowboys. They had the hats on, but they were, it looks like they're riding prawns, shrimps. It looks like they're riding giant shrimp. And they had blue, like that blue legs. Like it was <laughs> fucking me up. And we walked in, we're walking around and this herd, this herd of 10 dudes on these shrimps, these costumes went, ran, like went by us. But one was trailing and he was trotting. No shit. And that's what fucked us up the most because we're you know coming on to acid and yeah. we see this and we're both like, did you? Th yeah, right? And he's like, yeah, those are <laughs> prawns and one just get just, you know, not gallop, not gallop, but kind of like yeah. double, like double step, like didn't it, like the ponies do. Yeah. It was crazy. I was like, this is going to be fun. <laughs> it's going to be fucking fun because Saturday night was when Tame and Paula came on and everyone from L.A., knew that's where the party was you could feel it it was like whoa this isn't just festival kids this is there's a lot of drugs there's a lot of weird outfits here there's a lot of models that are going to give out some herpes tonight this is going to be crazy <laughs> all right let's do it instagram porno all over the place i'm sure of it yeah great fucking time anyway i'll stop rambling about it we're going on too long here but um anywho yeah good time that album's great once again slift u-m-m-o-n Aman, whatever you want to call it, 
Um, I, I think that's close enough. <laughs> I would say check out a couple of the music videos. Someone actually was like, are they going to make a movie? Because it kind of looks like they could. Um, so pretty neat shit. Uh, so what would you say, man? You like it? One out of ten. One out of ten, I would say... I'm going to say, uh, yeah, 9.8. You motherfucker! What? Is, is that, that was the number I had. That's when I had my fucking head. Yeah. Fine. I have to give... I'm not going to change my answer. It's 9.8 as well. <laughs> it's yeah we have to you can't give a 10 you just can't give a 10 you know it's i think i gave a 10 at, at uh for for romstein i think okay well we'll have we'll have you can you can you just gotta be like gotta be if you're like i all right it. then it's a fucking 10 then i'm gonna give right. it a 10 i okay. changed my answer final tony, answer tony's a 10 out of 10 i'm a 9.8 there's no reason for me not to say that they're that yeah yeah, fucking most excited that. album. I, this is probably the most excited I've been about an album in a year. Oh well, then yeah. See, well then right. it is a ten for you. Then it yeah, is for me it is. It's it's really fucking great. But I love that, like Alex said. That's how did you say it? Stone indie stoner metal. Yeah, metal. Indie, or yeah, you can yeah because it, it does. Especially, I mean, the first song is pretty it's pretty hard. Yeah, and there's stony indie stony stoner rock. Yeah. Right, I me. Mean, but the last, there's a couple of jams. They don't, they don't yeah. adhere to like four minute songs for the radio. No, no, no. They fucking play. Right, and the two of anyway, I'll, I'll stop. But the two look like brothers. I just want to point that out. And they smile at each other like the whole time. It's great. It's like, like they're really having fun. It's really. I was just like, they're smiling. Like that's neat. Like maybe, maybe yeah. they're lover brothers. Who knows? I hey, I don't. I mean, if it's part of the show, I'll watch. If it's not, it's none of my business. <laughs> it's part of the show, I'll watch. Um, <laughs> All right. Of- so the wheel. Yeah, speaking of uh, love, uh, lover brothers, let's uh, get this wheel out. No. I really hope we land on three from hell this month because it'd be great for Halloween. It's yes, that would be. Yes, and uh, yeah, I don't know why I said and. I had no oh, okay. <laughs> I was like, I don't know, I don't know why I said that. But uh, and let's start. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um. Number one, we have Three from Hell, the soundtrack and the movie. Number two, we have Wheeler Walker Jr., Sex, Drugs, and Country Music. Number three is Alex's Spot. If it lands on his, he's got to come up with something on the fly. Number four is God Flesh, A World Let Only by Fire. Number five is uh, Nefix, Fight Back, A Collection. Number six is Daughters. You can't get what you want. Number seven is my spot. Number eight is Melvin's Five Like a Dog. Number nine is now Green Druid, their latest album, At the Maw of Ruin. And number 10 is Sparks. Oh, Kimono My House. Yeah. Kimono My House by, <laughs> uh, by Sparks. By Sparks. Yeah. All right, man. All right. What do we got for him now, Johnny? Yeah. You get everything. <laughs> it hit my fucking finger. Uh, four. <laughs> four. God flesh. A world led only by fire. Cool. Um, well, the good thing about um three from Hell soundtrack, Tony, is that um we still got a little bit a little ways until Halloween. So Yeah. I mean, I got real lucky last time when it landed on um slipped so yeah i know right that was that was fucking perfect wasn't it yeah line yeah i, I like it when uh when the lord intervenes yeah, yeah and, and it was pretty close with uh rammstein too right uh, pretty, pretty as you close. guys can tell we you know we do it we, co- we cover a lot of hip-hop in this show a lot of hip-hop yeah. <laughs> can't help ourselves we like what we like if anybody wants to make a suggestion though right alex do yeah <laughs> otherwise we're gonna keep playing the shit we like and then we're gonna keep having two viewers so whatever that's fine but <laughs> if you want to make a suggestion go to youtube i don't know why i'm talking like an asshole uh go to <laughs> i'm getting paid by corporate america yeah um go to youtube to our a uh, our channel this is the future unfortunately and make a comment in the comments about if you want to see a band, uh, li- want us to listen to and talk about the band and their album. And if you have a soundtrack or a movie, you could link those up if you want. 
And or just be like, hey, I love you. Hey, you suck. Whatever. Say hi. Do something. Right. Tell, tell us about how you feel about the Slift album we talked about. Or, you know, like give us your review if you want, you know? Make fun of my fucking hair. I really don't give a shit. Make fun of his hair. Yeah. I want you to. He does, actually. <laughs> all right. Well, we'd like to thank you all um, once again for watching. Uh, please enjoy. If you think it's good enough or fuck that. If you want to tell someone about it, send them the link. Let them watch it. Um, that's it, man. Bye. Just bye. And go watch more music. I, I didn't see any of you at, at any of these concerts. Go to more shows. Just do it now. Just, just go now. Yeah, all, right. all right. Ew. All right, we're getting out of here. Alex is going to show me what he can do with his tongue. Bye. <laughs>